It's Friday, time for your history update. So coming up on Monday is the bicentennial, the 200th anniversary of the founding of Indiana University, which uh, you know we've been preparing for for several years now. You've probably heard a lot about it. Uh, but what I want to talk about today is 200 years ago, what are we talking about? Like what was Bloomington and Monroe County? Like why was the university put here of all places? Uh, and I say of all places because you hear it referred to as a frontier college. And so what do we mean by frontier college uh, in that sense? So for those of y'all that uh, weren't around uh, for a eighth grade history class, Indiana history class uh, here in Indiana, you might have missed out on the fact that Indiana was settled from south to north. And so this is an 1816 Indiana map. Uh, it's got a little glare on it because it's got, it hangs on the wall in my office. Um, and so you can see that Monroe County, which is right here, and that little dot is Bloomington. Uh, in 1816, when Indiana became a state, this was the frontier. So Kentucky was a part of Virginia and Virginia settlers were coming through Kentucky and starting to come up into the Northwest Territory. Uh, and so this was the, the, the front edge of that settlement. Uh, we talked about David Hervey Maxwell and the Indiana Rangers. That's why they, they were patrolling from here to here and back and forth across the Buffalo Trace because this was, this was frontier area. And so this line, it's also known as the 10 o'clock line, and we'll see a couple versions of it on the maps. Uh, actually ran uh, between what we know today uh, as Unionville and New Unionville, uh, the Benton Township area, was not a part of Monroe County. That was still uh, unsettled territory uh, that belonged to Native Americans. And so by the time 1820, uh, here's an 1818 uh, version of the map, and you can see there's a, a few more counties added and everything now, but in Monroe County shows up, we're no longer part of Orange County, and Bloomington is on there. But you'll also notice that that, that line still exists. All this territory north of here uh, was still considered territory of the Miami uh, Indians for the most part, but that's a little misleading. Uh, a lot of the early recollections of early settlers uh, attribute it to the, this, our area, having a lot of Wea Indians, and I, and I hope I'm saying that right, W-E-A. Uh, they were, uh, they spoke a dialect of the Miami, but they, they didn't, they weren't entirely often considered a separate group from the Miami. Uh, and so there were a lot of Wea Indians who had moved over from the Vincennes area and kind of lived in this area. And then the Potawatomi were largely the group that, that lived north of here uh, in this area. And so uh, early settlers like uh, David Lemon, uh, who was born here in 1845, uh, and grew up in the area, he talks about uh, interacting with and knowing Native Americans early on. And in fact, he had even learned to count to 20 uh, in the Wea language. And when he got to college uh, in the 1860s at IU, he had realized that language was sort of starting to die out. And he tried to do what he could to remember the pieces of it and write it down so that he would be able to save it. Well, of course, it's, a, it's not a written language. He's using our alphabet to try and spell these things out. So how accurate it is, we don't know. But, you know, even in the 1860s, locals were beginning to realize that the Native American population uh, was disappearing from the area, uh, largely due to this ongoing uh, movement and resettlement of folks. Uh, if you look at all the treaties that were signed uh, with Native Americans, you can see the different ones as different parts of Indiana uh, became uh, settled uh, by, by European Americans. And so to be a frontier college at that point was kind of a big deal. So in 1816, the state of Indiana had decided there would be a seminary of higher learning that was the culmination of the state schools. Uh, but there wasn't any funding, there wasn't any land, there wasn't anything to, to support that. So in 1820, uh, the state approved uh, a, a federal piece of legislation from the, the president of the United States that gave land specifically to uh, fund the university. So you could sell that land or you could build there or you could do both. And we chose to do both. And that land was on the frontier because that was the land that was available to the federal government at that point. So uh, in, in 1820, when we were founded, it was based on uh, the, these frontier maps and frontier time frame of 1818. Uh, and so that's why it's important uh, that we understand uh, that relationship and that history uh, and where that idea comes from. Uh, 
It's also a good reason uh, to point out, so our First Nations Education and Cultural Center here on campus um, has a land acknowledgement statement uh, that they have written for the university uh, that's on their website, and you can download it. Uh, and it says, Indiana University wishes to acknowledge and honor the indigenous communities native to this region and recognize that Indiana University Bloomington was built on indigenous homelands and resources. We recognize the Miami, Delaware, Potawatomi, and Shawnee people as past, present, and future caretakers of this land. Now, this is specific to IU Bloomington, but actually a lot of our campuses uh, have this sort of local history that goes with them. IU Southeast uh, is actually built on Grant Line Road, uh, which was the original Clark Grant, one of the first settlements in Indiana. It was built just off of the Clark Grant. It was built on the other side of that line, hence Grant Line Road. Uh, and so if you look at the history of our campuses, you'll find that all of them have these different histories for when the uh, uh, land became part of the United States or was settled by European Americans. Uh, and what the history of the Native Americans were in that area. But it's kind of neat to 200 years ago, think back to this being the frontier and what life was like here at that point. Uh, I love reading about that stuff. So that's your history update for today. Uh, we'll see you again next week uh, after we, we celebrate that 200th birthday.